this painting on cars, gloss finishes, goes way deeper than just the clear coat. Um, it, ba it basically starts with the primer, with the preparation of the model itself. Um, so I, I spent the last couple of days, I didn't do near as much preparation work as Joe did. Hats off to Joe. Um, I just haven't had the time lately. But I wrote this essay kind of the last couple of days, and uh, so there's going to be some holes in it. But it pretty much starts out with the primer, the preparation of the body itself. Um, it's like nothing, no different than anything else. It, it starts from the base, and you've got to choose your, choose your paints. Uh, I recommend sticking, choosing a brand and sticking with it throughout the build. In other words, if you're going to use Tamiya primer, use Tamiya paint, use Tamiya clear. You know, don't switch brands. I've seen a lot of guys, they'll, they'll paint their model with one type of paint, they'll use a different, they'll use, go down to Kmart and buy Dime Store primer, then they'll paint it with Tamiya paint, and then they'll overcoat it with, with uh, some clear they got from the hardware store, and then wonder why the finish looks like shit when they're done, or there's a reaction that happens between the clear and the, and the color coat. And it's because they're not using the same brand of paint throughout. You know, Tamiya spends a lot of money, all everybody does. Mr. Color, Gunzi, Testers, Tamiya, they all spend a lot of money formulating their paints and making sure that their clear coats work with their color coats and that their color coats work with their primer coats. So it's real important to try and stay with the same brand throughout your paint, throughout your build. But um, so I usually start off with, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what color am I going to use on my model? Because the color that you use on your model is kind of going to dictate what color primer you use. Obviously, if you're painting black, you don't really have to worry about it too much. But if you're painting white, you want to use a white primer. If you're painting a light color, a, a yellow or a light blue or a light, lighter green color, you want to use a lighter primer, like a white primer. You don't want to use a gray, because gray will make inadvertently make your color coat turn kind of muddy looking or, or, or mute it a little bit. Um, so you start off with a, with a primer that's you know fit for the color coat that you're going to use. Um, some color coats, depending on what they are, to me is kind of famous for this. Um, they're pretty translucent. Some of their reds are translucent. Some of their yellows are really translucent. Mm -hmm. So you have to use a base coat underneath them. Otherwise, if you use a white primer, for example, and you spray a Tamiya yellow over a white primer, it pulls away on the edges. So the edges are going to look kind of white because of the primer underneath, because the Tamiya co uh, color is so translucent. So if you base it out in a, in a, a different yellow, um, doesn't necessarily have to be the same color. You want to try and base it out with a lighter color than what your top coat is, so that your top coat covers it good. So you're not. If you base it out with a darker color, that darker color is going to change the top coat color. Mm -hmm. The darker color will show through the lighter color, especially on a translucent color. Even though it may not be what's considered a translucent or a transparent or a candy color, which are all considered transparent paints. There are some of Tamiya paints that are, have properties that are very thin. They're reds. For example, my Ferrari over there on the table. That has a white Tamiya primer on it. And then it's overcoated with a TS-49, which is like a dark, medium red color. And then it's top coated with TS-8. Because the TS-8 is really transparent. But the TS-8 is what gives it that bright Ferrari pop. The, the TS-49 is a little bit muted, but it's not quite as bright. It's it's, uh, but it's a good. It was a good color to use as a as a base coat. So you kind of kind of think in those terms when you're starting painting your model. You got to think, okay, what color is it going to be? How do I need to primer this so that it best turns out the way I want it to? So once you've made those decisions, I mean, when you apply your colors, even right down to your primer, you want to start off. Uh, you know, you got to scuff the model. A lot of guys wash the model. Uh, resin models, a lot of guys 
We'll soak them in um, like white wall tire cleaner to, to get the uh, mold release off. Personally, I've never done that. I've never had any issues. Um, I always prep my car bodies with like 600 to 800 grit wet paper. And I always sand wet. And in lieu of dipping it in some exotic cleaner, I just put dish soap in the, in the water when I wet sand. And I've never had a problem with it. That what people are worried about is is mold release on a, like say a resin body. If you just grab that resin body and start sanding it without cleaning it first or without putting some kind of a soap into the water that you're using to sand it, it basically takes that mold release and actually drives it deeper into the resin and scatters it all throughout the body because you're just rubbing it around. So if you put a detergent or like a, a dish soap into the the water it helps to cut that that mold release off or if there's any grease or any kind of surface contamination on your plastic model from the manufacturing process it'll take care of that um, plastic models I still sand those fully you want to get rid of the surface gloss of the plastic or the resin um, and again with like a 400 or 800 grit paper why are you getting rid of the gloss for the, the paint will adhere better so if you're doing if you're doing a, a multicolor car, for example, and you have to mask off, if you don't sand it, if you don't prep that body, when you mask off, when you pull the paint, the tape up for the next color, it's going to pull probably nine times out of ten, it'll pull your base color right off the model. So you've got to you've got to prep it. Um, and then, so when you when you start applying your paint, I always put like two to three coats of paint on, and I wet sand between each each coat. I wet sand, when I'm painting, I wet sand with like 1,000 grit paper. And um, when I say two to three coats, what I consider a coat is that when I coat a model, I'll, I'll start off with like a, whether it's with my airbrush or a, um, out of a can, I'll put a really light like tack coat over the whole thing and wait just a few minutes, just enough till it starts tacking off. And then I'll put like a, another medium coat on, same thing, wait a few minutes, let that tack off. And then I'll put like a full wet coat over the whole thing. That's what I consider a coat of paint. So now you've got enough paint on the model that you can actually, when you sand it between what I can when I say sand between coats, when you sand it between the coats, there's actually enough paint on the model that you you stand a chance of not actually sanding through the paint right back down to the plastic or the resin. And you got to kind of watch out for edges and things like that. You don't want to sand through, but when you're doing primer, it's not a big deal if you sand through an edge or something like that. But you'll learn that. Once you get to the top coats, you really want to avoid sanding through on the edges because ultimately that'll change how the top coat looks. Even if you're going to put another coat of paint on, if you've sanded an edge off and it's through to the primer, you put another coat of paint on, that edge is still going to be slightly lighter than the rest of the paint on the model. So you want to really avoid burn, what we call burning through the edges and, uh, you know, just a lot of guys will take like masking tape to me a tape and they'll, they'll put a, a piece of tape over the edge so that they won't hit it with the, with the, uh, the sandpaper at all and then once they finish sanding they'll take that tape off and they might take like one swipe over that just to kind of smooth it out and, and uh, make it the same as the rest of the model but you, you really want to try avoiding burning through the edges um, and once you get to your you get all the the primer built up and you've started to lay down your base color if you're using a base color or you're just going straight top coat. Um, top coat meaning that's your ultimate end goal coat. That's the color that you want the model to end up. Um, you just build the layers up. You know, it, I typically don't put any more than three coats of paint on a model. Um, and, and what I'm going back to what I originally said, a coat of paint for me is actually three coats. So you're actually maybe got nine, nine coats total, but they can be really light coats that just building up the layers and sanding between, you know, like every third coat you're sanding, wet sanding it down. And the reason you're wet sanding it down is because you want any imperfections to stay as small as they possibly can be. And, and it could be just as simple as knocking the orange peel off. You don't really have to sand it down until it's like, you're not sanding, like I, I said in the brief, you're, you're not sanding to remove the paint, you're sanding just to smooth it out. So depending on 
how the paint coat looks. It, you know, you might just take a really quick swipe over it and knock the orange peel off and then put another coat of paint on. You want to build up layers because that will give you the depth in the paint job when, when it's finished. Make it look, you know, that's what makes a model really look striking is when you can look into the paint and it looks like it just never ends. Same thing on a real car. Um, so if you, once you get through all the primer and the base, uh, base coats and the top coats, and now you're going to start clear coating, all those same principles apply. The one thing you don't want to do, at least in my opinion, some guys may do this differently, is once you get to that last color coat of paint, you don't wet sand it because there's, it's, there's too high of a chance of sanding through an edge or something like that. And then if you do that, again, you've got to kind of almost... You know, go back and okay, I gotta put a whole other layer of paint on to try and hide that. So you ultimately you want to try and get to a point where you're putting the last coat of color on and you want that to just be just a perfect coat of paint. I tend to paint on the heavy side, which means uh, I put a lot of paint on, almost to the point where it's running off the model. And I do that because I want the paint to work with itself and flow out as best it can. And it can only do that when it's really wet. If you put on dry coats, you're not going to get it to flow out. And by flowing out, that's going to eliminate your orange peel. It's going to eliminate uh, how much wet sanding, if any, that you have to do before you start putting clear coats on or before you put another layer of paint on. Um, and it, it just makes life a lot easier. I have never since I've been an adult modeler. I've, I've only finished those three cars since I got back into modeling in about 2010. I've never sanded any of the clear coats because it just scares the shit out of me to do it because you get to that point in the model, you've got so much work invested in it and all you have to do is burn through one edge and you screwed the whole paint job up and like the Ferrari, well any of those, they got so many decals on them that if you have to start over, you might as well just throw it away and start a whole new model. It's just like, it's the work that's gone into it. So I, I avoid wet sanding the final clear at all costs. When you paint that heavy dirt, what if it doesn't flow but it puddles? What do you do then? Uh, then you, you have to sand. I mean, I, there's, a, there's a nice big fisheye right in the top of one of those portions. And I could have sanded it out, but it's just like, Again, I, I avoid that, and, and, you know, those have both won plenty of awards. So a couple, one of them was even at the national level in 2013. But, yeah, I just, I, I don't like sanding clear coat finishes because it's too high, high of a probability you're going to screw something up. A lot of guys do it, though. I think, Jim, you do it. I, hats off. Because uh, it's a it's a feel and it's a technique that that only comes with experience, and it like Ricky said, it's a pain in the ass, and it's a really high stress, especially when you get to that level on a model. It's like, man, I don't want to screw this up. So, well, I guess my question was more not sanding, but you said you paint you paint real heavy because you want it to flow. Right. But can't. Doesn't you can have you can have areas productive if it puddles? if it does yeah if it's I mean it's a a lot of it has to do with just like sanding a model like Jim does and having a lot of experience doing that painting the way I do uh, takes a lot of experience I mean it's like you got to know you got to have a feel for okay I better stop or it's going to be running down the side right. and yeah I mean there are instances where. Um, you can put too much paint on. I did it on that Ferrari, actually. I put too much paint on um, and had to wet sand it back. And this was in the color coat. I don't know if you guys notice, on uh, Tamiya paints, when you, um, especially when you spray them out of the can, if you spray them on too heavy and they puddle, the um, propellant that's in the can will make the paint bubble. So if you have a pool or I, I noticed it on the Ferrari and on a, on a couple edges, and that's why I ended up having to wet sand it and, and, and put some more color paint on it, color layers on it. Right, like on the bottom edge of something, and the, the, it looked great up here until it got down to this edge and it kind of puddled across the edge, and you could see little pin marks in it. That's the propellant that's in the paint in the can, trying to escape out of the out of the paint. 
So that's an indication of putting it on too heavy. But um, in that case, you have to bite the bullet, wet sand it out, lay more color on, keep going. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, when you, actually you probably should, I, I kind of reverse the steps in this, but um, before you sand the body, before you even get started, what I suggest is rescribing your panel lines, especially uh, like on this resin kit right here. The panel lines to begin with, pass this around, they're not real deep. So we, one thing you got to keep in mind is gloss paint is thicker than the, than the flat paints. For some reason, it, it, I guess it has to do with the way that the top coat or the gloss coat skims over or, or tacks over and it just makes the paint thicker. So you lose little details like that really quickly. So I always rescribe the panel lines, rescribe them a little bit deeper so that I won't lose that definition later on. Um, but uh, yeah, then you wet sand it and go through all your steps. So you get to the color and you've got a nice, a nice uh, final paint coat on your model and you're ready to, if it's got decals on it at that point, you want to put the decals on. At least I do. Some guys don't. Some guys don't like to clear coat over the decals. I do because I've got models sitting in my display case at home that I built when I was a kid and virtually every one of them, the decals are dried up and peeling off of it because they're so old. And if they're clear coated, they're sealed in. They're not, they're, they're protected. They're never going to peel up. Um, so I like the clear coat over them. A lot of guys, oh, that's not, that's not the way the real car looks. And I don't really care about that. I won't, I put so much time and effort into my model. I want it to last more than you know five or six years before the decals start coming through. I use a variety of different clear coats, and, and I brought three different uh, examples. To me, a clear for a gloss. It's a TS13. Um, this is a testers spray lacquer. This is just basically dull coat or clear uh, gloss coat in a spray can. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the same stuff that you can buy that's in the jars, like the dull coat. You can buy it also in the I'm jars. Better, it's gloss coat. What's that? The gloss coat, I don't think very much is super glossy. No. That goes glossy. Yeah, none of the, uh, to me, none of these are real glossy. They're, they're more of a, 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 a glossier form of a semi-gloss. Yeah, yeah. But the, the Mr. Color, the Super Clears, the UV Clears, this is not a UV clear, but they have UV clears, which are supposed to be UV protectant. Um, these I found really nice. They go on really good. They don't harm decals. Uh, Tamiya's got a pretty bad reputation. I think Tamiya's reformulated TS-13 now so that it doesn't eat decals the way it used to. But uh, Tamiya Clears used to be notorious for eating decals up. The, the Gunzi, the Mr. Color, I've never had a problem with it, and I've I've done a lot of stuff, uh, used this over a lot of decals, even homemade decals, and not had it uh, eat the decals. So you never use an airbrush for a clear coat? Well, on the Ferrari I did, and both those Porsches are both airbrush. Those are done with um, what they call a two-stage clear, which is uh, like a zero, zero paint or gravity color, so there's another company called uh, Scale Finishes. All of these companies are taking real automotive paints and packaging them in smaller quantities and, and rebranding them under their own names. And, and they're really just nothing more than a DuPont or a Ditzel or something paint that you can go buy from the auto yeah. or from the auto paint store. But the flip side is the auto paint store is like for a quart of paint is like could be a hundred or two hundred dollars, and they're selling you a jar. Maybe a hundred milliliter jar for fifteen or eighteen bucks. And it's usually pre-thin, ready to spray. You just have to. The two-stage paints are. It's actually three parts, but they call them two-stage. There's a the paint, a hardener, and a reducer or a thinner. And that's what those are all painted with. And uh, yeah, those are all painted through the airbrush. But I've used I've used stuff out of the can. A lot of my, lot of my egg planks that are shiny. Or, yeah, I know you don't consider those real, but they're uh, they're done with the Mr. Color. Um, and this stuff you can polish, like I said, I've never done it, but boy, I would 
you got to put a lot of this paint on to get it built up heavy enough before you start polishing. When you use the two stage clears, generally I spray those in three coats. Same way, just mm -hmm. a tack coat, a medium coat, and a full wet coat, and I'm done with it. No more after that. Um, future floor wax. Don't use future. Future belongs on floors. Jim will argue with me, but future floor wax is just that. It's floor wax. It's not made from models. I would never use it. Okay. Um, I've never tried it, but I would never use it. Just okay. Because he complains about it not having enough shine for him. And that's why he's been looking for the last year for a different co uh, clear to use. Yeah. So it's four. It's four. A lot of people. I have it. They ate through the decals. You did. You yeah. had a problem with it. Yeah. Really? I've I've never had a. Honestly, I could say I've never had a problem with this. But yeah, I show that. I'm, I'm not to not to say that people have it. Um. Yeah. Uh. The the two stage clears are generally a urethane. So a urethane. In my opinion, I've never seen a urethane paint attack a decal, so it's pretty safe to use over any type of paint. Well, one thing too with the 2K clears is once you pop that hardener on the can, that's it's it. Not, yeah, you've got about six you, months to use it. You have it. to use it or it's going bye-bye. Yeah, and fortunately most of these companies that sell these kits, what I, what I call a kit of, of paint, which usually comes with the paint, the reducer and the hardener, they'll sell you a bottle of hardener separately. Because yeah. the because that the, the clear and the reducer will last forever. It, it once the hardener. One tip. A lot of guys uh, when they're airbrushing, they use CO2 as their propeller. Some guy, I mean, a friend of mine, does. He doesn't use compressed air. Um, so once you break that hardener open, if you purge it with CO2 or an inert gas of some type instead of oxygen. Because oxygen is the corrosive. If you purge it with CO2 or any kind of inert gas and then seal it, it'll last not as not as long or not like it was never opened, but it'll last longer than if it was exposed to oxygen and sealed up. Um, Derek, you said that it was a urethane. No, the two K, the two stage clears. Are these these so, are so, all. The question is though is because I know I, I use public urethane. Same, same thing. Because that yellows over time, so I was wondering if that two stage was really yellow. Yeah, I, I mean, those Porsches are six years old. So. That charger right over there is about the same. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, I think they've general. made advances in that area, especially in the automotive industry. Um, you know, and, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's not a polyurethane. I, I don't know enough about chemistry to know if there's any other types of urethane. I'm sure there might be, but I don't know. Um, Derek, are you, when you use the, the Tamiya spray cans, are you heating it up, you know, putting it in a bowl? Sometimes I do. If it's a new can, no, but if it's an older can, I do. Um, if it's an older can, obviously you've used some of the propellant out of it, so oh, okay. it doesn't have the same pressure in the can that it started out with brand new. By heating it up, it, it not only thins the paint out slightly, but it, re it increases the pressure inside the can, so it'll spray a little bit better, yeah. Um, so anyway, when I, getting back to applying the two-stage clears, I do the, the three-coat method, a, a light tack coat, a medium coat, followed by a full wet coat. And then, like I said, I leave it. I don't mess with it after that. What it is, it is. I, I don't know if it's recommended that you can sand that out, if you, like if you get a, a flaw in it. If you can sand it out and recoat it, um, I think for some reason I, I think that putting another layer of clear over already dry clear will, will react. But I could be wrong. You might have a certain time window that you can do that within, like a 48 hour time window. If you don't do it within 48 hours, you better leave it alone, kind of thing. Um, but the, the flip side of that is, is the two stage clears, they come out a lot heavier on the model. Yeah. So there's a lot more material there that you can wet sand and polish. Where, like I said, with these, you got to put a lot of paint on to have enough on there to actually be able to wet sand it and polish it. And you wet sand and polish the clear coat just the way you would wet sand the, the, the paint, the color coats. 
Except I would use, well, on everything, when I wet sand a, a color code, I use thousands of paper wet all the time. So, um, so Derek, you just put one total coat on clear? Yeah. You don't put another or no. over? So no, because once the, once the uh, urethane dries, I don't know that they recommend overcoating it a second time. Like I, said, I think you have to do it within a certain time window, or you, or by putting the next layer on, it reacts with the layer that's underneath. It needs to cross them before curing. Yeah. Once it cures, it doesn't cross them. Yeah. Yeah. So, once it cures, it, it, it cross them. so, that's about it, really. It's 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 not rocket science. It's all pretty simple. Uh, I mean, this brief goes into a lot more depth. So, if you have any questions. Email me, let me know. Um, other than that, you know, we were saying you'd like to stay at the same brand as the stage across the whole process, but, but the two stage urethane. Yeah, that's the exception. And, and, and because it's a urethane, I, like I said, I've never seen the urethane paint react with any other paints. You can almost top coat, at least I, I know the way I know it working is you can, you can top coat over acrylics. You can top coat over enamels, you can top coat over lacquers. That's the other thing I didn't really cover is when you're painting them all, I mean, a lot of you guys probably already know this, but maybe not. Um, when I paint a car model, I put a lot more paint on than I do when I'm doing a military model. And that's because I want the paint nice and smooth. Um, you know, you want a car body nice and smooth on a tank if it's a little rough in some places. Plus, you're doing the way you do camo and stuff like that. You might end up with it being rough anyway. You're spraying a lot lower pressures when you're spraying a military model than you are when you're spraying a car. Um, but when you're when you're laying down those colors, you you can't spray. For example, you can't spray an enamel over an acrylic. You can't spray a lacquer over an acrylic. You can't spray a lacquer over an enamel because those will all react with, with each other. Think of it, I kind of wrote it out here, is, is acrylics are, are um, what I call the coolest, the coolest type of paint, meaning they, you can top coat anything with an acrylic paint within reason, and it won't react with the underlying paint. The same can't be said with enamels. Enamels will react with, a, with a, an acrylic. If you have an acrylic that you've sprayed down first and then put an enamel over it, it'll react with it. You might get away with it on a military model because, like I said, you're not putting paint on as heavy on a military model as we do on cars. And at least I don't. I put them. When I paint in a military model, I'm putting on really light, thin layers, really low pressure. And they're not wet. The, the, the paint layers that I'm putting on on a military model aren't heavy enough to react with the paint underneath. But when you're doing a car model, you're putting on that paint on a lot heavier and it stands a chance on reacting with what's underneath. When you're laying down like your color coat and everything like that, what like PSI would you run? Uh... I usually paint everything about, I don't know, 16, 18, 20 pounds, somewhere in there. Just depends. Depends on how thin I got it. Sometimes I screw up the mixture and I got to crank the pressure a little bit more. But, Still um, by feel pretty much. Yeah, by feel. Um, lacquer, ba lacquer paints. Uh, you can't spray those over enamels or acrylics because they will lift the paint underneath. But you can spray any of the other paints over a lacquer. So if you start out with a lacquer, you can put an enamel over a lacquer. You can put an acrylic over a lacquer. You can put an acrylic over an enamel. Don't spray lacquers heavy on bare plastic. Depends on the brand, but yeah, you're right. Um, lacquer paints. If you put them on heavy, on an unprimed surface, they will bite into the plastic and actually, depending on the model manufacturer, could create what we call craze the plastic. And basically, it ends up looking exactly like it would as if you put that lacquer paint over an acrylic. It just, it alligator skins the whole thing. What do you use for primer for a lacquer? Um, to me, I use to me a primer for just about everything. And you just spray lacquer over that? Because the, the to me a primer is a, a synthetic lacquer. Yeah. All the Tamiya sprays are synthetic lacquers. Um, all of those models 
the, the red Ferrari is decanted to me a TS paint, and the, the two Porsches are sprayed with a spray can. Uh, TS to me a TS spray can. So, and then you know the clears. Like this says spray locker. I know. I know to me or to me a tester's paint from when I was a kid. I have never used this on a car model since getting back into modeling. But um, I know these as enamels. I don't, they're, 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 if this is a locker, it's completely different from these two. It has completely different characteristics. A lot longer, a lot longer to dry. Uh, tester's paint is notorious for taking forever to dry. I mean, it's like you've got to paint it and put it away in a shoebox for a couple of weeks before you think about doing anything to it because it's still soft. You can leave fingerprints in it. Where the Tamiya paints, even out of a spray can, they're dry in 24 hours. Um, I haven't used the Mr. Color colors in a spray can. I've used them out of the jars through the airbrush, and they dry really quick too. I think that the Mr. Color and the Tamiya are formulated very similar. But one more thing do you have a recommended short time um, you know, that's a good question. I, I don't really know the answer to that. The Ferrari, I did, I did pretty quickly. I think it was maybe 24, 48 hours between the red and, and the clear. Um, the Porsches, I know, were a lot longer, maybe weeks. I fought the Porsches with oh. the decals. Uh, yeah, the decal, the decals over the fenders, they were original release kits, so the decals were really old, and they cracked. Every, all the decals went on beautiful, and I saved the decals for over the fenders last, and they all cracked, it was disintegrated. Well, then, and Tamiya had just re-released re that kit, so I went down to Tamiya, got a couple more sets of decal sheets. But of course, all the colors were different. So I had to, um, I basically had to redo all the stripes over the top, and, and that's really, it's just decal over the top of the decal. I didn't strip it off because at that point I wasn't going to go that deep into it. But. So it was weeks before between paint and clear on those. But the Ferrari was at the most maybe a week. You know, to me, it paints overcoated with the urethane, the zero two feet clear. And zero, there are, I don't know about uh, in the brief, there's the last couple, the last three finishes listed in the paint list. There's gravity color, scale finishes, and zero paints. Zero Paints comes out of England. Scale Finishes is in Utah, and Gravity Colors is back in Florida. They're, so they're American based. They're all automotive based paints. Um, don't know what brand of paint they're buying from the automotive store and rebranding as their own. But I um, forget where I was going with that. They're, they're all your. Oh, what I was going to say is, I, I know zero paint, but I don't know about the other two. They make what they call a one k cooler, which is a single stage cooler, which is like these. And I know the zero one k clear. I've never used it, but I've seen um, feedback on the internet from people that say it's a lot hotter. It has reacted with decals, so I don't think it's a urethane. It's something else, probably some kind of synthetic lacquer. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I really like the two-stage clears just because they seem real forgiving over the decals. And I mean, none of those have been polished. That's that's how they came out. I, like I said, I fear that I should have put a piece of sandpaper against any of those right now. So that's about it, really. Does anybody have any more questions?